What is going on, guys? It's Adam, a.k.a. Marf. And this is Marfugel News. Tonight, we're going to be covering a chilling story uh, right after this. We'll be right back. Very smooth. A chilling story. Uh, What an intro. Pift. Pift. P-F-F-T. What is going on, guys? It's Adam A.K. Marv, and this is Marfugal News. Tonight, we have some very chilling stories to talk about, and I mean that. Uh, obviously, there is a big event happening tomorrow, and a lot of you may actually be going, so I wanted to uh, let you know what they're now doing to try to stop that or uh, what some think uh, is going on. So we'll talk about that. We have a ton of stuff to talk about, including South Korea. Uh, Destroyer is now in the Strait of Hormuz. Which, again, Strait of Hormuz, if you've been in this, uh, I guess, area of things, then the just Strait of Hormuz by itself is a, is a kind of a, a trigger there. Uh, and then we're also going to be talking about the joint statement, U.S. Intelligence Agency Claim Solar Winds Act. That, uh, of course, again, new uh, updates on that. And then, of course, the message that went out to the broadcast or a broadcast, a legally broadcast to FAA uh, aircraft controllers or uh, air control, air traffic controllers, uh, basically saying that they were going to get revenge. And by they, I'll explain here in just a minute. Uh, but before we start, uh, let's make sure to get this out of the way. Nothing in the show should be considered legal, medical, or financial advice. The views of the callers can differ considerably and do not necessarily reflect the opinions of myself, Dex, or anyone else with the show. You should always do your own research and consult with professionals. The internet is full of fake news, so please take everything with a grain of salt. And if you're not getting notifications, make Make sure to go to marfuglenews.com. You can actually get push notifications from us. Uh, again, you know, don't depend on the algorithm gods and don't say, oh, I didn't get notifications until three days later, so I watched the replay. Uh, we send out our own. Uh, mind you, tonight, uh, the, the, the system, I guess, one signal is down. So lots of things have been going down lately. Again, that's what we warn you about. Uh, let's bring in Dex uh, before I bring to the next part. Dex, what is going on? Dex is my co-host and internet brother. How are you doing today? Uh, hello, Adam, and hello, Fugal Fam. I'm feeling uh, different today. We had to go out and uh, pull the lever on the, the machines again. This uh, was our big day here in Georgia. So, uh, of course, you had the runoff there, and uh, you know we'll probably cover that on tomorrow's show. Again, just to let you know, yeah. before we lose a lot of people, we're going to have a big show, DLive only. Uh, we're going to talk about pretty much everything and anything. So remember to tune in tomorrow over there. I know that there's going to be a few that are like, I hate this. That's fine. There, the replay will be available through a link on our website after that. But if you want to be for the the live event, uh, I would highly recommend being there. Uh, there are reasons for everything we do. Uh, we are still here, while others are not. Obviously, uh, they can say, "Oh, they're you know uh, they're still on because they're this or that," when really it's because of the same things that they criticize us for. You know, it, 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 oh, it shill this or shill that. Uh, okay, but we're still here. Uh, if we, you know, say words differently or if we uh, carefully back up our stuff, then, you know, that's what we have to do. And I've known since the beginning, I knew two and a half, three years ago that there was going to be purges. And there's been tons of them. So, again, we've made it through almost all of them. But, again... All right. Uh, by the way, you can follow along all of the articles here. We back them up with a source so you know what source they're coming from. You know, uh, w you know, of course, who is saying what. Uh, you can go to our website. In fact, if you renew it right here, uh, you will see it's very easy to navigate. Just go to this thumbnail. We interrupt your normal broadcast 
to bring fear. Uh, of course, once you click on that, you'll see that it has every single tweet, every single article, every single uh, video archive document that we are going to show you here today will be right there. And then on the right side, if you want to support us, you can use our Amazon link if you just click that box. Uh, if you are already using Amazon, of course, a lot of, of you are using it every day. Uh, you do have to use it uh, every single time you go to shop there. But again, just click on that for 24 hours. It will go and it will credit us with a small commission and it won't cost you anything else extra. Uh, and then, of course, all of our affiliates are over there as well, including a QR code, uh, which you can go to, and boom, it just brings you there. All right, and then uh, let's see here. Uh, in fact, you can... That's even cooler. Uh, you can actually go to uh, any of our stuff just by scanning that uh, with your phone right now. I didn't didn't even think about that. All right, uh, let's get through with it. Uh, we've got some pretty, pretty crazy stuff here. Dex, before, uh, before you go anywhere, uh, can you explain the NASA to air departure upgraded SpaceX cargo? Uh, can you explain this for us? Yeah, certainly, Adam. So, uh, you know, it's they're getting ready to televise, I guess, uh, and air the, uh, and this was a, a release from uh, NASA about the um, SpaceX Cargo Dragon. So it's been attached to uh, the space station and apparently coming up uh, soon, um, it's, on, I believe it's January 11th, uh, they're going to actually fill it up with a bunch of cargo, basically, I guess, a bunch of science experiments that have been going on in space, fill it back up into there and then bring it back down uh, to Earth. So it's, you know, again, one of our, um, you know, cargo missions, if you call it that, where we're supplying and bringing back things uh, from space with commercial vehicles. So uh, they're going to be, you know, televising it. So it's kind of an interesting thing. If people like to watch that stuff, uh, they were just making a big deal about airing it. And I think it's going to push back for a little bit and then it's going to do a descent and then it will go through the atmosphere and land. I believe it's in the Atlantic Ocean with a parachute. And who knows what will happen? You know, we've seen a lot of these things that they say is going to happen then, and then it ends up being canceled or moved back, or they cut the feed or whatever else. So I'll definitely be tracking uh, that story for for sure. Um, Want to say there's already a bunch of Fugle Fam members here. Thank you guys for the immediate support of the show. Seriously, a bunch of people came in hot. So thank you guys. You're supporting. Um, you're, you're supporting us, you're supporting Dex and I, and you're supporting independent journalism. As you guys know, we actually uh, pass that forward and we support a lot of small creators, uh, including over on DLive. In fact, uh, that very, very publicly, we have been uh, a financial supporter of, I want to say, a few hundred channels now. So, uh, Macaduda Arizona says, Blessings, Adam and Dex. Love the Fugle fam. Let's all stay safe and ready. Thank you so much. Uh, Kathleen Gilly just came in with a super chat. No comment. Thank you so much. Uh, Cheryl Beth Carter Carter says, US, US, T Man 111, US, US. Uh, P.S. Love the fam. Thank you, Cheryl Beth Carter, uh, with an 1111 uh, super chat there. Lola Cafe, love the name. Love uh, that you've been here uh, for now a long time, two years plus. Peggy Neal, love you, Adam and Dex. Thank you for all your hard work and bringing us true news. Uh, American Patriot, uh, thank you for the support there. Time for change. Cycler is back, uh, of course. We uh, met you uh, yesterday as your new name. I think it was Revealing or something like that. This one is a coffee for Dex. Well, thank you, Time for Change. And then Bonnie Whitehead says, Get ready for SH blank F. It is here now. So on that last one, I agree. And right now, again, I hope that people have heeded our advice over the last three years. I don't think it's the end of the world uh, today, tomorrow, or, or uh, you know, anytime soon, hopefully. Uh, but again, I, I do think that people need to take some of this seriously as far as the stuff that we've already shown you, what has been said today. Now, what has been said today, it is pretty unanimous. I'm going to show you the comments under that video. In fact, Dex, could you pull up the, the Marfugal News video and just give me the link to that so I can go directly there? Um, it is pretty crazy the ratio of comments of what people think about that story. <clears throat> and I'm going to let you guys read that because honestly, uh, most of them, yeah, 
you'll just have to see it. Uh, again, we'll talk about that here in a second. It's basically air, air traffic controllers were told, uh, or I guess there was a broadcast that went over and superseded what they were listening to, and it was a message saying that, you know, you took out our guy, uh, we're going to get back at you, we're going to take aircraft, and then we're going to take them into the capital. Most people are saying that's a no-fly zone, the second people come in, uh, you know, anything that is uh, the size of a bird comes in, it's going to be pew pew down. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, unless they want it to, that's that's what I have to say about that. Because obviously things happened and uh, of course they say, oh, well, we just happened to be doing a drill on the other side of the country and uh, couldn't scramble in time. You know, those kind of things happen. Or at least they've happened before, right? Yeah. 2001? September? Yeah, that one. So, I wouldn't put it past for anything else. Again, I, I would not be surprised by anything. And that's why I keep my head on a swivel at all times. I know that every single day on this earth is a blessing. I know that uh, I do not take this life for granted. I've almost died several times. I believe I've been protected at least long enough to to do whatever I'm doing now. I, I honestly uh, didn't, didn't ask for any of this and... and uh, incredibly blessed to have all of you guys here. So thank you. Uh, let's get into it. White House's planetary protection strategy is about space invaders, but not the kind you may think. Now, just by the title there, I mean, <laughs> now there's a planetary protection strategy. Again, I've been telling you guys for three years, but of course, you, you guys already know. As military and commercial activity in space increases, there is a growing risk of unwanted guests coming back to Earth. And it says the National Space Council and Office of Science and Technology Policy, or OSTP, has released a new version of its National Strategy for Planetary Protection. It says the document is about alien invasions, but not the kind we are most accustomed to from science fiction. It actually outlines various strategies and policy goals that various stakeholder agencies, including NASA, uh, the Department of Defense, and the Federal Emergency Management Agency, can employ to ensure the, quote, sustainable exploration of space uh, by appropriately protecting other planetary bodies and the Earth from potentially harmful biological contamination from space exploration activity. So... Just to break that down real quick before before we move on, because that's kind of a mouthful there. It says, employ to ensure, because I think this might be important later, the sustainable exploration of space by appropriately protecting other planetary bodies and the Earth from poten potentially harmful biological contamination from space exploration activities what the hell do they mean from that dex do you um what did you think when you yeah. read that well you know I, I i think that this is a noble uh cause but to me it's more of a footnote of what you would be doing up there but it's interesting that they're putting it front and center so um i mean ultimately i think that what they're really doing is exploring and potentially uh trying to deal with ex you know extraterrestrial um, beings, if there are such out there, but what they're really saying is, hey, we're just worried about you know some you know funky space dust that may come back that has you know the next uh, you know virus on it that's going to cause a problem. So we don't want that to come into our into our atmosphere and, so, and get everybody sick, right? So I, you probably haven't seen it, but it's like monsters or love or something. Um, I want to say it's a, it was an on-demand movie that just came out. It was supposed to come out in theaters, and it the the plot line is that meteors were headed towards Earth, and they sent a bunch of nukes up to hit them out of the sky. And what happened is they hit the the meteors, and everybody was cheering and and uh, all happy because they knocked the um, the meteors from hitting Earth. But what happened is all the radiation came back down. And it turned all of the regular animals and things into these crazy beasts. Uh, in fact, the whole movie has like, you know, 
a 40 foot frog that, you know, has a 30 foot tongue and tries to kill the guy, the whole, you know, first scene in the movie. Um, again, it is actually such good graphics and everything else. It's actually a believable, um, it, it's a believable scene when you're watching it, right? Uh, of course, now the the movies are insane, but uh, it was actually a pretty entertaining movie. But, you know, is that kind of some sort of predictive programming? Are they actually going to uh, worry about something like that? Why did they have Starlink, which again, a lot of people just think, oh, it's just internet. It's just fast internet. In fact, I just heard a D live streamer the other day say, oh, I can't wait for them to get all the Starlink up because it will be awesome for, say, platforms like D live. Because think about it, uh, more people around the world will have access to the internet, therefore more viewers from around the world, and guess where they're going to go? They might actually go to DLive or some, you know, decentralized, uh, you know, place. So again, great for that, right? But what else is Starlink for? If you're new here, uh, I have proved, and now they have now announced, uh, that Starlink is also for detecting objects coming in. They've added sensors to uh, Starlink that will detect hypersonic speed uh, objects. And that includes meteors and hypersonic missiles, whether they be nuclear or natural from outside of uh, space. But what is really weird is just this like little tiny part of the back of my brain, and I'm sure there's some of you that may agree. Do you think that some of all of these space missions and Space Force um, just, just maybe, just maybe might be because because uh, we pissed off somebody or you know what the Israeli you know retired general said that we've had a contract with you know aliens for uh, 50 years and and T-Man was about to tell everything about it our commander in chief said that he was going to release everything on aliens and then uh, he says what happened is they told him no humanity's not ready yet so he didn't that was supposedly the story the real story is uh, you know T-Man actually said hey we're going to release all this stuff even before that in 2016 uh, Podesta and all these other people actually there was something going around that they were going to release some information so is there going to be a big disclosure uh, are we going to find out that there's multiple species and that one of them is now pissed off at us and now we're actually making uh, with the help of other aliens uh, some sort of defense system towards something that is not what I'm saying My, uh, but I, that does sit in the back of my head I always leave doors open as far as a meteor coming at us, I think that's a matter of time. It's not a, it's not a, a uh, you know, it's not an if it will happen. It's a when it will happen. As far as this goes, the planetary protection, it says the national strategy for planetary protection comes on the heels of several other significant space policies released by President Dewey. It says the most significant of which being the creation of the U.S. Space Force. The world's superpowers have been jockeying for position in the new space race over the last two decades, and questions and concerns over the militarization of space loom large. Now, again, uh, they just came out just a few months ago. DOD said that the other bad actors or Russia and China have indeed militarized space. They said it straight up in a press conference and it was just happened to be. I don't believe there's any coincidences. And once you see that, really, if you just take out the fact it's a coincidence, it starts to really come together and it really just starts to seem like, wow, we're just lied to every single day. Uh, it's completely obvious, but you know, you're looking at a pig and they go, no, that's a giraffe. And if they say it's a giraffe long enough, you're going, okay, I, I guess the new definition of a, a giraffe is a pig. Then you do. But with everything that's happening, I, you know, I honestly don't, don't know about what is, what the heck is going on. They're telling us one thing and, and something else is happening. Uh, that was days after the B root explosion, which was pretty insane. Uh, and they still don't have exact answers of what happened there, if you know what I mean. It uh, tore up a, a place. It looked like a nuke went off. But I guess it was uh, fireworks. Sprinklers, maybe. or uh, What do you call them? Maybe your Roman candles. Who knows? Earth is spinning faster than at any time in the past 50 years. So, obviously, 
headlines like this grab me right away. I don't know what they say to you, but uh, I have followed different things like the massive earthquakes like Boxing Day. Uh, of course, you had Japan in 2011. Uh, they say that those earthquakes were so big that they either shortened the day or lengthened it by like 0.1 second. Uh, earthquakes big enough to tilt uh, the wobble of the earth. Now, now they're saying it's actually spinning faster than it was before. It says year 2021 is set to fly by as the earth is spinning faster than at any time in the past 50 years, prompting scientists to call for the addition of a negative leap second. Dex, so does this mean uh, we're going to have to set our clocks back uh, three seconds or something? Yeah, I mean, technically, it sounds like we would have to change them. Uh, although most of our clocks, at least on our devices, are set by, you know, standard servers that would handle that for us. But yeah, we would lose a second or, or a few. So this is, wait a second. So this is the same kind of thing that happened when we had that big earthquake. And that was due to what they said was a wobble. So are we wobbling more? Or are we truly going faster? And why would we be going faster? And what's going on? It says, <clears throat> the world's timekeepers are now debating whether to delete a second from time to account for the change and bring the precise passing of time back into line with the rotation of Earth. It says, well, the addition of a so-called negative leap second has never been done before. A total of 27 leap seconds have been added since the 1970s. It says, in order to keep an atomic time in line with solar time. This is because for decades, the Earth has taken slightly longer than 24 hours to complete a rotation. But since last year, it's been taking slightly less. Isn't that a trip? So... It was actually taking longer than 24 hours to make a full loop, and now it's taking less. That sounds like something is changing, or we're getting farther away from the sun. Isn't that what they say that we're doing? You can put it in the chat. I'm going to hop over there. By the way, Claudette Hernandez, thank you so much for your support tonight. Frequency says, ordered two earthing mats today. Can't wait to try it out. I hear great things. Much love and uh, Marf and fam. Hey, that is seriously awesome. We don't even... Um, they were working on their systems, so we haven't even really uh, talked about them. So for the fact that you went in there and found it on the website is pretty amazing. Um, I have been doing earthing and Dex has been doing earthing. I've been doing it for over a year now and it really helped my intestinal stuff. It helped my swelling. It helped my uh, carpal tunnel. I mean, it helped a lot of stuff. It's all about inflammation and inflammation is the root cause of everything. So you already know that. Uh, again, that's why... Um, I didn't believe in it, I guess, when I first started it. Now, I tell everybody I know about it. So, again, thank you. Again, that's uh, Earthing. If you've never done it, ask somebody in chat. There's plenty of people who have been doing it for decades. It's uh, I, I've actually reduced the amount of medicines I take for my intestines after uh, using it. All right, and then we've got uh, Sham Alamari. Thank you so much for your support. I, I don't know if you, that was a super sticker, but you didn't write anything. You can always write a message or say hi, and then it will end up on the actual um, the ticker here. So thank you. Uh, Sad Sky says, not on the show for copyright reasons. Watch Katy Perry new end of the world video. They saved the world by unplugging the internet. Oh, that is freaky. I'm sorry that and the fact that it's Katy Perry too she's probably trying to say something she probably found something out I what I do know is that Katy Perry is probably you know stuck up in the Hollywood stuff but I met her and I feel like she was like super down to earth didn't have security nothing um, she was downtown Seattle like asking for directions and I was like you're Katy Perry she ended up being like super cool and kick it um, what I felt like though was that she was being taken advantage. That was when she was younger. So I wonder if she knows something and she's putting something out in her art or whatever. I don't know. I don't know if she even writes her own songs though. Half of those people don't. Uh, Liz Lamarche. Hi all. Shout out to my hubby DM walking. Happy B day. Love Liz Lamarche. Uh, your, uh, wonderful husband. Hopefully he's watching right now. Uh, again, hubby DM. Uh, happy B-Day. Happy birthday. 
And then we've got Sarah Hogue, Light Warrior for the Rainbow Road. And Jimmy, thank you for super chatting. Uh, I, I guess that's just Jimmy. Jimmy. All right. Now that that's done, uh, Nick in the Noise just got to your sub to Nord. Can't believe I lived without it. Everyone should have this Keep It Up Mark. You guys, thank you. Thanks for doing it for me. Susan, I'll get back and I will actually... Uh, I want to... Uh, dear... Uh, Okay, I won't wait on that. Dear Adam, Dex, Mod, Squad, and Fugle Fam, I already had something planned for you, Susan. Um, but by the way, I'm so grateful for each and every one of you. In hindsight, I'm confident that we'll all agree all of these wicked shenanigans were for the best. Hashtag Team Humanity. Thank you, Susan. Much respect. Thank you so much. And I appreciate your support, along with others like Bill I. Breckenridge, uh, Amy R., uh, Gone Girl Triple Seven, all amazing, amazing people. Uh, I'm just very lucky to have you guys, all of you. All right, uh, let's see here. What do you think about this? I'm going to go over to the the general chat here. Let's see here. Somebody said Katy Perry is evil. Uh, <clears throat> let's see here, and she may very well may be. Uh, let's see here. Katy Perry is satanic. Uh, the symbology in her videos is disgusting. I uh, don't so much disagree with you. I don't really watch uh, watch her, but yeah. Uh, Art Darnell says exposure. Let's see your spooky fast. Angel Webster. Um, somebody says some of these trolls are absurd. <clears throat> if we do have trolls, we have 5,000 people sometimes. We have 15,000 people watching live. Uh, if there are trolls and they're genuinely being trolls... Ask them how their day is going. You know, some of the people that are my, uh, you know, best friends now that have, you know, started out as trolls. I'm not going to, you know, put them on blast, but there were people that genuinely came in here kicking the cat where they were having just really crappy problems and, and you know, crap going on in their own life. And they came to somewhere like this where it was anonymous and they took it out on other people. And once they genuinely just sat around and people kept being nice after they were being assholes, they ended up coming around and it was great. So just remember that people have a lot going on right now, especially with everything with the virus and the, you know, lockdowns and all this crap. Um, just give them a chance and try to be nice and see if they still don't want to be here. The mods are great because they always try that. They always try to try to be nice first. Uh, let's see, Talon, Morrison, Trolls Matter. The thing is, is, and nobody's calling anybody if somebody was saying that in response. By the way, no worries. Again, you know, it's all perspective. Also, people can type things and it gets taken wrong. If you guys have ever texted somebody and they take the context wrong, it's the worst. I mean, you just can't type and get that inflection there. Uh, Michael Matos, again, love all. I agree with that. I just stroll, says Dolly Bear. <clears throat> Colorado Cajun says, thanks for the gift. It looks like somebody gave them a Marfia badge. Always do good for evil. Again, make sure to thank the mods. They have to put up with all of the negative stuff, and what they do is they try to turn it into positive. Uh, looks like we at least have Rip Curl and others in here, so thank you guys. Red in the Valley, uh, See the Magic, Thomas Harder, Brian Knight. Uh, long time listener Steve Brady uh, Time of the Signs uh, we got uh, Puss in Boots Harry the Rabbit let's see Ferret Dad hey welcome back nice to see you again alright uh, let's get into the next one and then we've got okay this is a trip I actually went through this kind of twice looking at some of this so Dex do you want to go over this as well uh, Dex found this and, and me and him were going over this and it's pretty interesting stuff. Yeah, certainly. So they, you know, they've been doing these flybys and when I say flybys, they're not over the top of the airspace. They're on the edge of the legal airspace around area 51 where they can fly, but they're using high powered cameras to try to take pictures and see what's going on. And we've seen these before we reported on these before these, you know, interesting hangers or a new hanger that's being built, et cetera. Uh, but what they're, what they've done here is they've actually in this recent photo, they found this triangle shaped craft under one of the, um, 
uh, what they call a scoot and hide hanger. And a scoot and hide hanger is a, is a hanger where you basically can pull in and basically hide the craft, uh, move it around. It's not necessarily a traditional hanger where you would actually park it for long term. It's like bring it in, make sure when it's sitting on the ground, it's covered. Um, and, and what you also see in these pictures that they've taken. So in addition to that first picture uh, where you can sort of zoom in and see the blurriness of this very sleek uh, triangle looking uh, craft, but then you can also see the progression once you get past that video uh, from like 2002 when this scoot and hide hanger was started and then how it advanced over time. Uh, 2006, they put a turnaround on the backside of it. Um, and then later in 2010, they started to add antenna arrays around it, which would have been used for probably unmanned aerial crafts, right? Um, and then now as we get up to pictures that are of recent times and even one at the, near the end here about a high contrast where you can really zoom in and try to see that, that craft. Um, so it's just, you know, more speculation around what goes on at uh, uh, what I think it's called, uh, officially called Groom Lake, but a lot of people know it as Area 51 and one of the newer hangars that's been progressing there over the years. One thing I just noticed in this one picture, it almost looks like they put this building and then some sort of, I don't know if that's, that's kind of funky. Um, I don't know if they put uh, dirt like kind of mounds around it so you couldn't see in from anywhere. Uh, even if you were looking with say a, um, it, with binoculars, you couldn't see in here because it looks like what there is is some sort of mound or uh, landfill. But it also looks like an eyeball. Uh, if you turn this upside down, that would look like an eyeball staring at you. Um but yeah, these are the pictures and it, and it progresses. Is this the same thing we covered before? Um, talking that remember the story that we covered probably, I don't know, seven, eight months ago. And it was talking about the drone swarms. And it was saying that there was possibly a place at, at Area 51 where they specifically, they could tell by how they made it that it was for bringing in, fixing, pulling over to the other side, uh, these drone swarms that they were going to start using. Yeah, it's very likely it would have been this hanger that they were talking about, this mm -mm. Uh, hide, and, hide and scoot hanger where you can just sort of bring stuff in uh, quickly because they, they did over time add these antenna arrays that are down the side of the building. So uh, maybe that has something to do with it and why people were speculating that. Of course, all of this is just speculation. None of this is officially released. It's just what we're seeing from from those that try to capture you know images where they can get them legally. Uh, and and uh, and then hypothesize on them. And I think there's another picture of a bunch of hypersonic shape crafts that were originally designed or at least uh, illustrated from the 50s to the 60s. So, um, of course, those things, if they're in existence now, are probably still hidden from plain sight, why they would use a hangar like this. Yeah, it. I guess, you know, in the movies, you always see some underground, uh, you know, kind of Star Wars type uh, bay, uh, but you know it's most likely under some sort of big, big bay like that. So these are kind of the, I guess X, the two three B or T T R three Bs or the versions that they've actually had. So these are all the supposed uh, experimental crafts that they've done. So who knows? We may have been seeing uh, U.S. government uh, up there. But, it, you know, again, now there's all this stuff coming out. The the Israeli professor and retired general, somebody who is actually extremely uh, respected, now basically saying, uh, you know, I'm old. I don't care anymore. You know, if I would have said this before, I would have lost everything. But now I've got nothing to lose. He said that the U.S. government is working with aliens. And again, this sounds crazy. Uh, but he said that they've been working with aliens for years and years and actually had a contract with them. And what I feel like is that's the same stuff. If that's true, that would be the same stuff that all these other people are talking about that where they had a contract where they could experiment on people and in return they would get technology. What is freaky though is if you see how uh, genuinely fast technology went up uh, just from you know 50 years ago. If you take the chip in a birthday card that you open up and it sings happy birthday to you, that chip has more computing power than what supposedly took us to the moon. Than the, uh, the, the, well, actually, sorry, the computer on the lander that supposedly landed on the moon. 
that's why a lot of people have a hard time, you know, hard time thinking that it actually landed on there. Just cause I don't think, uh, I don't think the computing power in a flip open birthday card could land on the moon, but that's what they say. That's how much powerful, um, much more powerful our computing is now than back then. So it's pretty, pretty weird. Again, very interesting article. It's a very long one, but it goes very in-depth. I would highly recommend it. You can go to marfuglenews.com to finish it. Uh, of course, that would be uh, uh, appreciated if you go over and check out all of the other stuff there as well. Uh, but yeah, we have access to everything there uh, for your convenience. And then if you guys like to support us in a different way and protect yourself, if you haven't already, I you know now it's almost like, some people want this by tomorrow, uh, but you're yeah. There's usually one or two day or something like that, but probably won't get it by tomorrow. Uh, in fact, I got a message today saying, you know, hey, could we get one of these by tomorrow? Um, EMP shield. It is basically it, it grounds the signal before it it fries a device. This isn't just some you know Joe Schmo company or or something made in China. This is made in the U.S. It is owned by veterans. Uh, again, it can actually block against E1, E2, and E3. And this is one of the few companies mentioned in the EMP resilience report by the Department of Homeland Security. Not only that, have they worked with them? They've worked with DOD, and now they're officially on the Demso team, helping protect the Texas grid. We've also shown you the the uh, some of the new orders that are going through are now uh, employing EMP. So EMP shield is one of the best ways to defend against an EMP. You can go to marfuglenews.com slash EMP. Uh, it will also actually protect against solar flare protection up to 228,000 amps and lightning, which people don't think about until it happens, which your house insurance deductible on a lightning strike could be $1,500. This would pay for itself uh, five times with one lightning strike. All right. Well, thank you guys for supporting. And for those that already have it, you guys know you can put it in a car. There's versions for your generators, uh, versions for your solar system, all sorts of stuff. Again, that's marfuglenews.com slash EMP. Uh, don't, don't tell us we didn't tell you so. All right. Uh, let's see here. And then this, this should be... I think this should be bigger because of what I've heard. And we now have our guys drilling with South Koreans. Uh, some of the weirdest night drills have been done with the South Koreans. So I watch everything they're doing as well. Uh, they have a lot of our tech. We are actually, I, I believe, uh, and I don't know if this can, I don't know if this can be confirmed. So I always like to clarify uh, but I believe that we are outsourcing some of our really high-tech uh, AI robots to South Korea. I'm pretty sure. I And if I have an article, it would be actually on a show that I know exactly which show it's on. Uh, and it would be archived. But I do remember them doing... Uh, that the U.S. was talking about you know outsourcing some of their stuff. South Korea uh, is very tightly you know, kind of entangled with us because, of course, NK and all the situation over the last three years, but they've gotten even closer now because they've got some of our tech. Uh, it says, South Korea uh, says that the warship's mission is to prevent further seizures while they work through diplomatic channels to free the captured tanker. Now, remember, there is a theory. Uh, in fact, a gentleman, the video is absolutely famous it's him basically talking about files that he saw where he was in this discussion and the guy came in he goes hey we need to take out seven countries in seven years and he went through the list and this again was before like three of the the ones on that list and now Gaddafi and all those guys all of them are gone uh Hussein all of them uh and he says seven countries in seven years and uh he says this scenario where there was a ship going through the Strait of Hormuz and it was one of our own uh, and it gets attacked by another ship, one of our own, but painted like somebody else. You can guess what that kind of event would be called. It's actually happened in history at least. Uh, I believe in, in uh, WW1 or WW2 there was a scenario where 
I want to say, and I'll, I'll, you guys can fact check me and put it in the chat, where the Germans, I believe, had one of their own dress up as somebody in Polish uh, military uniform and then threw a grenade in a school or something. So then when people saw and witnessed it and said, the you know, they did this, then they were able to then go look at the horrid things they've done. Come join us. We're, we're going for them. That is called a certain thing, uh, a fantastic Freddy, what we call it here. But again, this is what we look out for. We look out for just, you know, anything and everything. We're responsible adults that prepare uh, for the inevitable or for uh, the possible, I, I should say, or reverse. In joint statement, U.S. intelligence agencies claim solar winds hack likely Russian in origin. So I keep my mind completely open because I know that 90% of what I'm reading is propaganda uh, in my opinion. Again, that's my opinion. And I believe there is 10% truth and then 90% spin. And the way that we are spun is that we're always confused. I bet you most of you would probably be able to find out the 100% truth if you just went by your gut and said, well, that kind of feels wrong. But wait a second. Why would he do that if he's this? Huh? Why would that happen there? That doesn't make too much sense. Well, if it doesn't, it if uh, you get what I mean. If, Why do we always get these agencies? And you, they'll list them in a moment, I guess, when you read this. But it's always the same, and it's always like, oh, because these people have said it, then it must be accurate, as opposed to maybe an expert coming out saying, well, we've done this kind of analysis, and what we actually found is it is X, Y, and Z. It's like just the title of these groups are, is important enough to you and you should just believe it. Yeah, no, I, I get you. Well, so, you know, the, the whole thing with this is, is like, it's, it's saying it's these, we don't know that. And it says likely. So why even say that? That's directing everyone towards this. And, it, you know, Russia, Russia in itself, they do all sorts of crazy stuff. Um, but again, it's like they point back and forth and it's like we point out and then they're pointing at each other. So it just seems pretty, pretty freaking uh, weird right now when considering we've got all this stuff going with the opposite side uh, as far as China goes. It's pretty weird. And then if you look at the facts uh, as far as the China uh, task force, it's pretty obvious. So I, I don't know. Uh, or it could be a combination of the proxies that are that are working with this right now. All right, uh, let's see here. Uh, somebody's talking about Tartaria. We've talked about that on the show. Uh, Lori D, what's going on? Art Darnell, tomorrow feels like a big trap. I don't think so, and I think that's what they got you thinking. Who knows, though? Uh, I would keep open. I'm on the other side of the country, so I will not be attending, but uh, it would have been something pretty crazy to see uh, cover as, as news. Six million people possibly there. That's nuts. Uh, let's see here. So this is a big deal. It says, at this time, we believe this was and continues to be an intelligence gathering effort. We are talking, uh, taking all necessary steps to understand the full scope of this campaign and respond accordingly, the agencies added. Uh, it says, this is a serious compromise that will require a sustained effort and dedicated effort to remediate. It says a series of hack attacks were first reported last month after hackers managed to penetrate SolarWinds Orion software, which was used by several major U.S. government agencies, all of the main uh, military branches, all five military branches, and many Fortune 500 companies. 
It says CISA quickly directed U.S. government agencies as well as private users to stop using SolarWinds products. It says, but not before the hackers penetrated the U.S. Department of Homeland Security and Commerce, the U.S. Treasury, viewing Microsoft source code in the process, the company said. Now, Dex, what does it mean by when they were viewing Microsoft source code in the process? Is that saying that they have a way? They might be able to have a way to get in it later. Yeah. That it, well, if they're looking at the source code, they're getting into something that nobody except Microsoft has access to, and so they you know, having access to that could, you know, maintaining a copy of that or capturing that could give them uh, information they could use to, you know, create vulnerabilities or find vulnerabilities, um, and even worse is that they could have, if they have the right kind of access to that source code, they could actually have implanted something into that source code that might not have been detected. And then it could go on for years uh, and be sitting there dormant. Yeah, and now you've got the uh, Black Start uh, program. Now they say that they and this this very well. I mean, some I've okay. So I'll just say sometimes I'm saying what my thoughts are. Um, sometimes I may say some people think some people think that maybe uh, the Black Start was even told to you like that. Yesterday, they basically came out and said, Black Start, the program that the U.S. government would go straight to if we had a major blackout, the entire U.S. country uh, went down, a massive blackout, EMP, whatever it is, knocks down our grid. There is a plan. They've thought about this. They know about this. And they said basically... That they would take it, uh, that they would go to that plan to restore the power. Now, if they know that entire plan, they can go in and they can actually uh, stop it or keep it down and keep it from being restored. If they know the little points, then they can actually go there and, and sabotage them or whatever. So they went out and they actually found uh, the Black Start. Why are they telling us that though? Why did they? Uh, why did that get leaked? Maybe it's on purpose. So then when it happens, they go, oh, it was them or it was this or that. So I would just say from my gut instinct, along with everything that we are getting factual wise, they're all little pieces of the puzzle. Everything is compartmentalized from the very top. And once you've opened your eyes to the whole big wide world, and we're not talking about theories, we're talking about once you open your eyes to uh, the corruption and level of craziness, these are all human beings in extremely powerful positions, and you have the rest of the world that isn't like us, right? They're just, you know, you're talking about countries that you get pulled over, you hand a $20 bill to the cop, and they go, okay, go. There's plenty of countries like that. Now think about if you are doing international, uh, you know, treaties with everybody. How do you think you get those treaties signed? People are paying each other. People are bribing. People. Money is the root of all evil, and that is the the just plain old fact. So when you look at all of this stuff, everything that's going on right now. That's when you start opening your eyes and going, nothing is as it, it says. You know, once once you wake somebody up to the fact that all media, including Fox, even OAN and, and uh, Newsmax, as much as, you know, now they're better, but they're only doing stuff to jump on a bandwagon too. They're just going with it for that money, for that whatever. All of them. I mean, they, you know, in two years, they might do the same thing. We don't know. They might be bought. In fact, maybe they're good now, but they'll be bought by Murdoch or something like that because they've just grown into the biggest news or, or agency. Then they sell it to somebody who is in control. But the main point is once you wake up somebody to the fact that every media is controlled, all of the ads, all of the things that are subconscious everywhere around you, it's like the movie They Live. Everywhere you see it, you don't realize it, but you're getting guided in every which way. That's why once you wake up, it's really hard not to, not to see it. Do you? Do some of you agree? Once you know the signs and once you see it, then you see an event like you know what happened in in that country with the big boom, and you go, "This just doesn't seem right." 
In fact, so many people uh, said that that just didn't seem right. But what happened? They drilled it into your head. It's this, it's this, and it's this. And even the most hardcore people after two or three days are like, yeah, it was probably that then because it was drilled over and over again. And if there was anybody convincing that said otherwise, they're gone. Just get rid of them. See what it see what it is? I mean, that's the scary part about now. They always used to do that and it would always convince, you know, 80% of the people, but there would always be those 20% because they're listening to the very influential, you know, couple people that are telling the truth and they go, "Hey, here's like five things that are flawed by this. They're like, this doesn't make any common sense. And then each person they talk to, they wake up, they go, oh, 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 oh. Well, now they just get rid of that guy and then boom, it's all gone. No common sense. No, you know, they might think it in their head, but all their peers are making them feel bad for saying, I don't think so. Why do you think that there's this whole big stigma against preppers and all of this? This goes back to JFK. They attached crazy with preppers. When preppers is just doing the same thing military and government do every day. Uh, regarding this story, perfect ending to this is in response, Kremlin spokesperson Dmitry uh, Peskov said, Russia had no part in hacking operations and that the accusations were unfounded and a result of blind Russia phobia. Um, either way, they, I think they're probably in on it too, but I don't think it's just them. I think it's everybody over, you know, or it could be a flip flop and it's us. Just saying. You never know what's planned next. So, all right. Cat B says, uh, true, like they attached crazy for people believing in UFOs. Uh, and back then, now it's it's okay. Now they tell the Navy that, you know, report anything and everything. They can switch it in one day. Now people can talk about it. Now that Israeli retired uh, professor can now say it and it's not a big deal. It's it's weird like that. I I just I I think some something is on the horizon and it's much bigger than all of us. If you want to protect yourself in the cyber world though, I highly recommend getting a Nord VPN. Nord is one of the best as I believe who was that that just said that in fact. Uh let's see here. Who said that? Somebody just said that they got a 2-year plan and they said they don't they didn't realize they what they were missing. Oh, Nick in the noise. Hey, thank you, by the way. Uh, says, I just got a two-year sub to Nord. Can't believe I lived without it. Everyone should have this. Keep it up, Mark. Thank you, Nick in the noise. But again, if you don't have a virtual private network, I would go with any of them. If you don't go with ours, go with one of them. Uh, everybody in the audience that is using a computer, if you're on a cell phone, uh, again, one plan with these guys uh, works on six different devices, so it covers everything. You can uh, have one on your uh, computer, your cell phone, your kid's computer, your kid's cell phones. Uh, again, it has six simultaneous connections uh, with one account. Kind of think of it like Netflix, how three TVs can be on. This can have six TVs on equivalent or six computers. So go to marfuglenews.com slash VPN. This way you actually save up to 70% on a two-year or three-year plan. Uh, and you actually help our channel out financially. So thank you guys. We really do appreciate it. And it hides your IP from the bad guys. Um, Materio Ministry says, There is no pre-tribulation rapture. Great tribulation coming soon. Repent and obey Yeshua. There is no pre-trib rapture. Oh, so you're saying that we would live through all the crap. Yeah, um... Again, lots of folks actually argue about pre-trib, post-trib. Um, I just take it day by day and you know pray that everything goes in the right direction. Uh, did, uh, now, Dex, we're going to get into this, this crazy stuff here. Uh, but again, first to go here, China orders military to be ready for conflict at any second as Brit aircraft carrier prepares to sail to South China Sea. I'll just read that one more time. China orders military to be ready for war at any second as Brit aircraft carrier prepares to sail to South China Sea. 
if something was going to pop off, we are, man, we're looking at a whole lot of like, oh, molies. Now, stuff happens a lot and people go, oh, well, this was happening all the time. Uh, they'll even say, you know, people have been saying it for years that we're going to conflict. I don't think people realize how big of a conflict, a, a, a world conflict is. Uh, countries prepare, countries uh, make, they get ready for it. And they even know that the other guy is too. It's, I mean, it's like a board game. They're both building up their stuff. China is now the largest navy in the world by 70 ships. Just two years ago, they weren't. That's how fast they're building ships. We were just, uh, I th want to say four or five months ago, talking about uh, China's first amphibious uh, assault carrier, which remember, they didn't have any carriers. In just a matter of months since April, they now are on their third. Carriers. Amphibious ones. Remember, and the amphibious ones can go right up to the beach uh, and let people off on vehicles both boats and tanks. Crazy stuff. China has told its military to be ready to, quote, act at any second. This is the kind of story you would think you would hear from, like, Russia with the, the saber rattling, right? Amid rising tensions over disputed territories in the South China Sea. Uh, just to remind you, the U.S. has been doing island hopping uh, drills for now the last two years. It takes time to prepare this stuff. It comes as the UK's HMS Queen Elizabeth aircraft carrier is expected to be deployed to the region in the coming months as part of its first operational meeting, or I'm sorry, mission. This is uh, Xi here, who has now made himself the president for life, and the heavenly mandate, the Chinese heavenly mandate, says that they uh, have to be number one, and they will be number one. At whatever cost. So God is telling them that they will be number one. Whether that means infiltration or whatever, they're going to do it. It's crazy stuff. I love how this one guy's like, oh, that's a camera. Wow, that's a nice one. Because, you know, they don't have cameras over there. Just kidding. They have cameras everywhere. Let's see. But really, do you think G saw this? Or is he just cross-eyed? I don't know. I guess G is not like Kim. If Kim was like, if one guy was standing out of it, like, or missed the salute or something, and there was a picture of, like, him going like this, you know, they would have the anti-aircraft uh, weapons, you know, rearing up. But who knows? Uh, Kim actually did something because uh, a missed photo op with President DT. I remember hearing about a guy that got punished because he was in the background of a picture looking dumb. Yeah, but who knows if Xi is the same way. And then we have U.S. Air Force deploys airmen drones to a base in Romania. Hmm. And we've got artillery in Alaska. We've got uh, drills going on as we speak. And we have the South China Sea in our crosshairs. It says out of Bucharest, Romania, the U.S. Air Force has deployed about 90 airmen and an unspecified number of drone aircraft to a base in central Romania. Boosting its number of drone aircraft to a base, uh, and it says uh, boosting its military presence in the region where there are allied concerns that Russia is trying to display its military strength. It says the Romanian Defense Ministry uh, said Wednesday that the U.S. deployment in its Campia Terzel Air Force Base uh, will be for a few months to conduct information gathering, surveillance, and research missions in the support of NATO operations. See, where NATO comes in is all this stuff. Uh, this has all been talked about, and I think it was talked about at the meeting. Uh, you build a Berg or a burger is it build a, a burger uh, there was a certain meeting and trying to be careful there um, they talked all about this 
So I just wonder what is uh, what is coming next. It says the forward and ready positioning of our MQ-9 Reaper drones at this key strategic location reassures our allies and partners while also sending a message to our adversaries that we can quickly respond to any emergent threat. General Jeff Harrigan, U.S. Air Forces in Europe and Air Forces Africa, commander said in a statement. What do you think about this, Dex? And by the way, I am having like sneezes and um, my, I don't know if you guys can tell, my nose is just stuffed as all hell. Well, you know, we've seen the recently we saw clubs that went down through uh, some of our allied nations over there in Europe. And we've seen a lot of additional activity, whether we were putting um, monitoring systems on some of the islands that were close to to Russia, uh, sort of not to provoke, but to obviously continue to show strength um, and and try to pick up more data and more information uh, about movements from from Russia. So it doesn't doesn't seem to, to, or, or a surprise that we see this happen. But at the same time, when you put it all into the big picture of what's going on, you know, at the cyber level, uh, what's going on at the political level and what's going on at the military level and the movements and the tensions between allies of, of Russia and China, um, particularly one over in the ME that we're, we're dealing with right now, it's not surprising to see that we're going to continue to push and move uh, you know, offensive and defensive equipment into different areas like this. So totally, uh, totally um, not surprising, but also should be alarming in some sense that we need to think about what are, how are we as a country and how are we as a world getting to the next level of, you know, conflict and is, are, are we closer? Does each one of these moves take us closer and closer? And I think the answer is yes. Uh, and I, you know, I, Certainly pray that that never happens, but it, the, the writing's sort of on the wall right now that all of these moves are not meant to um, get along. They're really meant to uh, either create conflict or, or show strength in, in a way and get what the other person wants from, the, from the, their adversary. So some think that it's already happened and what has happened here over the last year and over the last four or five months is the infiltration and everything else they did it quietly they did it all without firing a, a shot right um look at what's happening look at how uh certain people backed out of the china, china tax force it's like it's like uh if you've ever seen cases and in fact uh john jasmer this kid that got murdered when i was in high school he was in my class uh he basically he was the same age as me, different school, but we were, we were good friends. And what happened is he ended up getting killed and his two best friends that killed him, uh, was really messed up. They hammered him. They shot him. They put a bag over his head. They buried him alive, did all sorts of things because this girl said that the guy, you know, got with her and it was this guy's, uh, girlfriend. After they did this and buried him by this uh, native uh, uh, tribal place, she told them that she was lying. She was just doing it for attention. All sorts of messed up. But my point being is that these kids helped and publicly helped search for him. I just wonder, you know, some of this stuff that's going on, it's like... <laughs> you have them stepping in and, and like kind of helping with it. I mean, this Dex, do you get what I mean? Like, do you get what I'm trying to say? I'm trying to be, yeah, I, 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 I'm trying to read between the lines, but yeah, I think I get it. That's probably hard for others. Basically, basically they, uh, you know, why would, they, why would they, I guess, why would they do that? It, it, it seems like they are doing something where it's very obvious that uh, they're trying to make it look like they're not doing it. I, 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 uh, I guess I'm on. I'm, I'm in dangerous territory here. It seems to me like it is. We're extremely close. 
And I think there's a lot of people that agree, but you know, now they're making it look like it's somebody else when it's really them. Um, with the U S there's lots of stuff that basically points another direction when it very well might be from inside. Okay. Well, so, uh, the China task force, they backed out of the China task force, only one side and certain people that are now involved with all of the drama right now, they would not go on the task force. Well, why would you go on the task force, uh, where they're going to be investigating and all the stuff that you may be a part of. Do you, do you guys get what I'm saying now? I was trying to put it in a way, but there is not one of one side of the party in that China da task force. It's only the letter R and no letter D. I think that that's weird. Even if you are, uh, you know, part of that party, that doesn't mean you're bad, but these guys, these guys, something is going on here. And look at what is going to happen. They're already saying they're going to reverse a lot of these things that, uh, you know, basically cut China out of the picture. It's pretty weird, to say the least. Well, I mean, you can look at the public things that we, that our administration has done and our government has done against uh, that country from technology to even software apps, right? Publicly pushing that stuff off and saying these are problems. I mean, so you, you can definitely read between those lines as you're as you're trying to describe right that's what i'm saying uh, it's it's pretty clear to me that they're already here like this is already kicked off uh but now they're figuring out the logistics of it how they're going to do it because it's hard to fight a conflict when you don't know who your enemy is and your enemies are all around you there's a scenario right now where uh, they're switching out people like crazy uh, next to DT because he doesn't know who's actually on his side and who's a spy. I mean, that's a fact. They don't even, uh, they even told, and this is something I don't think we covered, but I, I forgot to put it in. Uh, they, ch they wanted to change out Pence's uh, security. The, the people that are closest and change them out with, security that was good with T-Man. Some weird stuff. Secret Service st kind of stuff. Like even the Secret Service was, you know, at risk. Anyways, we'll talk about it tomorrow. If you guys ha did not uh, get here in the beginning, remember we're doing a very special show, uh, D-Live only, over on uh, D-Live. We're going to talk about a ton of stuff, so make sure to be there tomorrow. Uh, we'll put the post, we'll send out notifications, make sure to sign up for notifications at marfuglenews.com. Again, if you're missing them, then get ours. We have our own push notifications. Uh, definitely don't want to miss tomorrow's show. We've got big stuff. All right, and if you're a replay watcher, hopefully you'll get there live, but otherwise, if uh, you're mad about it being over there, just remember you can go to the link on the website after it's done or it might actually be the next day, uh, but you'll be able to see the full replay the next day at least. Now it says major U.S. airlines back a global testing requirement, and you know what they're testing for. Obviously, it is the event that everybody is talking about. Everybody's jiving. Everybody's living it. Don't you love this CV? It says, a group representing major U.S. airlines on Monday backed a proposal by public health officials, which that's a whole nother block and a whole nother group there, to implement a global testing program requiring negative tests before most international air passengers return to the U.S., according to a letter seen by uh, routers. Pretty, uh, pretty crazy stuff that's going on here. And obviously, if it goes up the po totem pole, and there are there's money involved at any point of the totem pole, then things can get screwed up. Pretty crazy stuff. All right, and then this is a, to leave out on a positive note. This is something I wanted to put in on, on actually the last show. A police officer paid for a family's Christmas groceries instead of charging two women with shoplifting. So, 
I have actually seen something very similar to this in real life uh, at a Target, I want to say, or it was, maybe it was even Kmart. It was a while back. Uh, but a lady with three kids was stealing food in the, the stroller. Uh, similar situation happened here. Well, the cop back then, I remember, ended up giving her a $50 bill and paid for her stuff so she wouldn't go to jail. Um, I just remember it was, it was really, you could just tell that the, the kids, the every, they were just, you know, poor as could be, but is that right? That's the, that's actually what I'm, I want to ask you guys, uh, because I think that, you know, this is a good one to get an opinion on. We've got all sorts of folks here. Grace for you too. Thank you for supporting Lou Rock. Thank you over on D live KF property. Sounds like CV drill away. Uh, rapture soon 2020 praise to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ thank you so much for your support appreciate your comments there cat zoom keep looking up yep absolutely uh, love you Dex and Adam uh, KG Stasic thank you KG property can we talk about other news then just space lol well actually we covered quite a bit of non space uh, Trek prepper 53 pray that God puts real conviction on Pence uh, zippy uh, what is going on? Thank you so much for your massive support tonight. Southern Ninja, the recalcitrant. Uh, special shout out for Gone Girl 777, probably out uh, camping or, or finding some sort of crazy adventure. Uh, but if you're watching the replay, uh, just know that we're here for you. Tabby Cat, the recalcitrant. June M. Ashley, thank you so much. Tupid Twucker, I love it. Tupid Twucker, Quest Everything. Uh, Sigix, thank you for following. Lots of new people. So here's the story. Basically what happened is it's pretty simple. Two women uh, were stealing. It says a Massachusetts police officer used his own money to buy Christmas dinner for a family in need instead of charging two women with shoplifting. Somerset police officer Matt Lima was called to a stop and shop grocery store on December 20th after store security said the woman didn't scan anything that they put in their bags at a self-checkout register. It says... The woman, who had two small children with them, were stopped as they left the store. It says, uh, I have two girls myself, similar to the ages of the two girls that were there, so it kind of stuck with me a little bit. It says, Lima took one of the women aside so they could talk about what happened without the children hearing. Store employees kept the kids occupied so they wouldn't know what was going on. It says, quote, the woman I talked to, she explained she was working, but the mother of the children... Uh, was not working and had some other family issues going on. And what she had taken was Christmas dinner for the kids. Lima took, uh, told the WJR. Oh my gosh, that's so sad. But at the same time, coming from, you know, living in bad areas and stuff like that, you know, was it just that Christmas dinner? This is like really sad because, you know, she's getting that Christmas dinner which may be the one thing that she just w wouldn't take. But is this a one-time thing? Like, is this like a person who normally doesn't uh, steal, but this year it's so bad off uh, that she ended up stealing so her kids wouldn't be deprived of a single Christmas or a single Christmas dinner? Or are these, you know, two ladies like scammers and they do it every single time. Like they knew to go to self checkout and then not scan all the stuff. It sounds like they might be doing it all the time. Is that a good thing to set an example for? If you show the kids like, Oh, I can steal. And then the cops are going to bail me out and pay for my stuff. Can you see where there's like a divide and like, this is so sad and like such a pretty story, but at the same time, uh, it does have room to be like, you know, kind of messed up and maybe this guy's gullible and they gave him a sob story and he was like well I'm so sorry and here's you know uh it was he a gomer pile or was he a guardian angel you know like it, th I, that's what I want to have your opinion on I honestly thought it was a really awesome thing I, I feel like this cop had a really really big heart and, you know, there's a lot of cops like this. I've met so many cops like this. That's why when all this stuff went down, it's like, why are you blindly judging people? These are people under just pieces of fabric and metal. There's a lot of them with, you know, once they get the power, it goes straight to their head and they're just jerks. 
but there are so many really good police officers. Some of them are watching right now. I guarantee it. And you guys are so amazing. And I, every single time I see a, uh, a police officer, I tell him, thank you. And I don't care if you hate me for saying that I go up to him. I'll chase him down. I'll say, Hey, thank you for your service. Uh, military, same thing. If we were, uh, at, uh, what do you call it? Walmart earlier. I showed my daughter. I said, when we see this, we go up and we say, thank you. And I say, you know, Hey, and I have my five-year-old and I have my 14 year old do it. I, uh, I'm when my one year old's old enough, I'm going to tell them when you see them, if you see somebody wearing fatigues and their name, you walk up and you say, thank you. And I, I think that's how it should be. So I, either way, I think that in my mind, the police probably did the right thing. I wonder though, is he a new recruit? Because if he was on the, the service for 20 years, then I would actually believe that these women were just doing it that because this guy probably had the BS detector of all life, you know, cops can see right through, you know, bull crap. So what do you guys think? Uh, Lou Rock, thank you so much. Uh, cynical Skeptic, thank you. 71 Trolla, thank you for following. Uh, Copper Tropicals, hey, it's nice to see you. Again, I actually mention you a lot. If I mention Dutch, I mention you as well. Show kindness, pay it forward to someone today. The truth is out there. Thank you so much for your massive support. Um, you, I'm sure you and others like End Times and people like that, yeah, we actually support a lot of folks over on the, the platform. And that is exactly what it's about. It's about paying it forward. Uh, Desert Grana, Granny, thank you for being here. Out of the Woods, Chrissy27, uh, Simp Kapoor. That is a good one. Zookeeper Kims and that Chalky Gal. Look and listen. Thank you for following. Appreciate that. Dex, what do you think about the, the police buying the dinner? Do you think it was a sweet thing or Well, you know, what he ended up what he ended up doing was he looked through like the, the she she'd used a receipt. She bought some stuff, but she didn't scan a lot of things. So he looked through everything that it was, and when he realized it was food that's when he got soft. Right. And I, and I guess, you know, I, I admire that in, in some sense, um, you know, but I guess you still have to think about that whole BS detector, but what he did was <clears throat> only charge them with trespass. Didn't even charge them, just wrote them a notice for it. And then he bought a $250 gift card so they could go buy the groceries at another grocery store, which was uh, so they could have their, their dinner. So I think, you know, that was a pretty huge, that's dude, that's uh, actually a lot, a lot and, of money because Christmas, part. Gosh, were they in Seattle? I'm. I don't think we've spent two hundred and fifty dollars on a Christmas dinner. I if you went all out like a full on. Dang, were they grabbing steaks? <laughs> Shoot. Um. I guess I came from you know we we do everything you know try to do it affordably or or you know we've gotten by on so little most of my life that you know two hundred and fifty dollars on a Christmas dinner. What do you you know? Dang, you guys get what I mean? But um, but yeah, you no, had a big heart, obviously, a very big heart. Yeah, I don't fault them either way. I would fault the the women if anything, like you know, I and I've met some some people just in general that they're they can shice themselves into anything or out of anything, and it's just like, how do you live with yourself at night? It sounds like these women genuinely may have done it, but I don't know. Uh, let's go over to the general chat here. It looks like ribeye roast ain't cheap. Uh, yeah, that's true. If you actually go with a traditional, one of the traditional ones at least, you know, ham's expensive. If Or if you go with uh, traditional, uh, let's see here, pork alone. That's funny. Uh, $250 a month of groceries, Sharon M says. Yeah, no, I'm saying it depends on where you live. Here, that's not much. It's about a hundred dollars a day to live here, uh, groceries wise. It's pretty crazy. Uh, let's see here. It's but if you have kids, could be more. Uh, let's see here. My corn checks got soggy. Damn it, man! I pet mermaid. <laughs> Natty Jawika Maduka says Sharon M. What's going on? Uh, he probably bought them groceries for the week. Yeah. Yeah, probably did, especially gift card status. Roasted ramen with when time gets rough. Yeah, that was a thing too. Roasted ramen, uh, you know, uh, beans, 
uh, macaroni and cheese, hot dogs, and you would get like the cheapo, like, you know, Circle K hot dogs. Fergus uh, Macrio, $250 is not a big grocery bill. No, here, that's nothing. That's like you, I mean, you got three or four days worth of food at most here. Ilea says, I spend over $500 a month on groceries. I think everybody does. But for a, a single dinner, that's what well, that's what I was saying. A single dinner, $250. That's what I was saying. Uh, yeah, no, I, I get you. That's about three or four meals, in my opinion, if you do it right. Uh, let's see here. Help others in need. You never know when it, it may uh, be brought back in kind. Six glasses of hot dog water a day, says Pazel. That is gross. Pazel, uh, don't do that, please. I'm not responsible. Let's see here. I bought a five ribeye roast for $12 at Thanksgiving that was normally 80 Oh, and, and sales and the, the, what do you call it, the coupon people, man. Uh, I've always been jealous of that. I, I could never do it. Dude, that vacuum sealer comes in handy. You get that meat on, on discount, then you know it's about to expire. You vacuum seal it and freeze it. Love it. Yeah, I've never... You you talk about serve, uh, you know conserving and, and sealing and, and keeping your food. Uh, we're not there yet. We don't... We, you know, we're learning how to can and stuff, but... Uh, some of the people like uh, Homesteading in the Heartland, great channel to watch about canning. Uh, great, great channel as far as that goes. All right, well, it seems like everybody, yeah. S- somebody says, I get by on $200 food per month, Pirates, a Paradise Bar. Yeah, no, I, I've gotten by on it as well. Let's see here. In fact, that's usually what Washington gives for food stamps as far as like the standard for the last 10 years was like $200 if you were homeless or um, 220 something like that per person. All right, uh, let's see here. All right, well, we are all done. Uh, we, again, will be having a full-on call-in show tomorrow. Uh, again, we do the call-ins earlier, so it will be around 6 to 7 o'clock. We will give you an official notice tomorrow. Uh, again, it, it very well could be earlier uh, if if we end up doing our stuff. We're going to do a survey over on Twitter earlier uh, tomorrow, and make sure to follow us over there at uh, Marfugel on Twitter. In fact, you can go there right now and follow. Uh, let's see here. And you can click this. In fact, <clears throat> I just uh, clicked out again. If you see, if you just followed, we just clicked the link f- for that again. Uh, so you'll see it pop up in your notifications. At Marfugel is the account. And that is where we send out the actual notification. You click on it and it will bring you right here to YouTube or to DLive. Uh, thank you for all of the massive support tonight. Uh, Redhorn, thank you. Desert Grana, Cheryl from Daytona, Ki- Kiwi Cat, Mountain Lace, thank you all. It is now officially time for the Shoutro. Dex, what do you have to say about that? Well, I, I think it's a perfect time. It's not a shout out. And it's not an outro, but it's a what? So what is it? It's a shoutro. Say it one more time. It's a shoutro. Well, you were supposed to say the O very long, like shoutro.
walking down the street like a G.I. Joe. You know that man has some flow. Walking down the street like a G.I. Joe. You know that man has some flow. Walking down the street like a G.I. Joe. You know that man has some flow. Shady on the J bring Everybody really want the Scarlet and the Vango 54 With the Lori and Amy D You got the Chicago artists And the Amy Ray and the everybody wanna be a far Yeah Texas, go right, Texas, 
gonna do it just like Sam Gay. Gonna bring it like that, Sam Gay. Do it like a Sam bring it on the Monday. Oh, I do, I do. Susan down the hill with the runner with the scissors, lit all calorie. Bring it right back like a half pep mermaid. See where we went wrong. Got to go check it, come and back quick it. Y'all don't know, but and I got it wrong. I did it all, all day long. It doesn't really matter with the no store problem. You're doing it for fun. Hitting in plain sight, humanity is not ready. And we know Brock said he with everything we know in the last flash. It will be like guardians. Flight of the Navigator was number one. Holy moly, did we miss a jet? I think we did. Dex, I hope we can check that. They would be number 28 on our... I, yep, that is it. Uh, they must have... Unless they gifted 10 million badges. Holy moly. Flight on the Navigator, never waiting later. Head bobbing with the talent and the Morrison. Oh, talent did like an old Mr. Morrison. Like the old band, now we are knowing.
I love it all so much in my
Got the gun to call me on Hulu TV show. Watching now, I'm out back a few minutes ago. Had a wine with the chat in the oil. I'm retail coming to your home. Feels like I have it. Oh, got it coming to home with the Tommy B. Call my PR and you're never going to see me. Come in the ass up, oh God. Bring it right back. Let's go in the whole ride. I'm going to do it right. I'm running. God, I see you with this. I'm in my bed.